Hi, in this video I'll be sharing specific examples of outreach and communication materials. While some of us may have access to graphic design support at our institutions, many of us are on our own. Whenever you can take advantage of Creative Commons licenses and avoid reinventing the wheel, it's a good thing. These marketing materials were created by College of the Canyons. This was an ad that the University of Arizona adapted from a College of the Canyons poster in 2016. Open Textbook Network members contributed additional kitten puns. We ran the ad in the student newspaper to publicize Open Education Month. I got zero responses from it, but I still love it. We got more traction from issuing a press release about Open Education Month, which led to an on-air interview with the local national public radio station and an article in the campus newspaper. You can leverage available marketing materials for Open Education Week and Open Access Week by planning events and communications that coincide. Both events offer high quality logos, handouts, and posters. At the U of A, Open Ed Week almost always conflicts with spring break, and Open Access Week usually conflicts with homecoming. We just changed the dates. For the past two years, Open Ed Week has offered logo options that don't include specific dates. In other years, we just cropped them out of the logo. The sites for Open Education Week and Open Access Week feature lots of event ideas. The Open Textbook Alliance's Organizing Toolkit for Students also includes event ideas. There's the How Much Did You Pay selfie table. According to the description, this is a great event to hold at the beginning of the term. Have a small dry erase board and ask students to write down how much they spent that term on textbooks. Then take a picture of them holding the board, post the photo on social media. Make sure to include the hashtag textbook broke and tag the student in the photo. With the used book graveyard, you can illustrate the impact that unnecessary new additions have on the used book market by setting up a graveyard on the quad for all of the used books that can't be sold back. Make gravestone shapes out of cardboard and paint them with the titles of popular used textbooks. You can also add creative epitaphs like, here lies the fourth edition, which died before its time. With the Price is Wrong game, ask students to stop and play this variation on the Price is Right game show. Put a bunch of textbooks on display and ask students to guess how much each one costs. The sad thing is that everyone loses. With the textbook, with the textbook taste test, uh, this is a great way to show students that open textbooks are just as good as traditional books. Lay out a few pages from an open textbook and pages on the same to topic from a traditional textbook, then ask students which one costs $200. When students see that the quality of the open textbook is equal, ask them to support your campaign. And then there's the giant textbook prop, like this humongous customized SpongeBob SquarePants mascot costume. Uh, this is out of a lot of our price ranges, but if you've seen one of Nicole Allen's presentations on Spark, you may recognize this image from her student advocacy days. This is what Open Oregon created for Open Ed Week in 2019. It's licensed CC BY, and each menu item here is linked to a how-to description for event organizers. Menu options include a Wikipedia edit-a-thon, a textbook petting zoo, and a thank you note campaign. The campus movie night featured a screening of the movie Paywall. One of the most effective and easiest activities I've done for Open Ed Week was to set up a giant whiteboard with the prompt, if I didn't have to buy textbooks, I could dot dot dot. I left the board up for a week and students kept adding to it. Some of the answers were silly, but many like these were heartbreaking. Actually pay rent on time, buy groceries. I like how the student added the hashtag, the struggle, survive, eat food, live again and get sleep, not work until 3 a.m. before school. Others said, buy a plane ticket home, 
not have debt-induced pan panic attacks. I showcase these responses in presentations to faculty and administrators. We created these textbook hero posters to highlight UA faculty who are using OER. We gave the faculty individual posters for their offices and departments and shared other posters with campus partners like the bookstore and our teaching and learning center. I got the textbook hero tagline from an OpenStax t-shirt. At the 2020 Open Education Network Summit, Josh Bullock and colleagues from the University of Kansas shared how their textbook hero program works. Josh described it as a low cost, high impact way to recognize OER advocates. KU features textbook heroes on its website and at OER events. It issues press releases and Josh sends personal emails to each person's boss or department chair. Honorees can list the award on their CV. KU now has nine heroes, which include creators, adopters, donors, and student leaders. I love how the award recognizes all kinds of OER supporters. KU also promotes its OER program in its alumni magazine, and it does fundraising for the program during the parents campaign. Josh says they make $35,000 to $65,000 annually from the campaign. The University of Texas at Arlington also have, has a textbook heroes program that you can model. Its textbook heroes page features an online nomination form and a series of videos. Temptations cohort mentor Mandy Goodsit shared this example from Cleveland State University. It's a thank you door hanger for faculty. It has a CC license for reuse. I've also heard of an OER program that creates posters for faculty office doors, showing how much money each one saves students by using OER that semester. These are some of the lessons I've learned through trial and error for various communication and outreach efforts. Beware of spending lots of time and money on a single event. I've had some embarrassingly low turnouts. But even when only a few people show up, it's not necessarily a failure. You're planting seeds. Years later, that lone attendee may become your next faculty champion. Running an OER program is a long game. Try tying OER into other relevant campus events. For example, a panel about first-generation students and their unique challenges could be co-hosted by your OER program in the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, a student success center, or a cultural center. I found that it helps to ask for RSVPs for events. I use Qualtrics, but there are lots of other free tools out there. I think people tend to feel slightly more committed to attending if they've RSVP'd. Plus, you capture their email address to remind them, remind them that the event is coming up and to follow up afterward with any materials that you shared at the event. People like it when food is provided, but I'm not convinced that it increases attendance. Plus, it can be a lot of extra work and expense for you as the event organizer. Accommodating a range of dietary restrictions can be a challenge too. Another way to raise awareness of textbook affordability efforts at your institution is through student-driven resolutions that support use of OER. The Open Textbook Alliance offers a statement in support of open textbooks, shown here, that student government leaders can sign online, as well as a sample student government resolution. The student PERGs, public interest research groups, can also provide support in writing resolutions. Caitlin Vitez, director of the US PERG's Make Higher Education Affordable campaign, worked with our student government association at the U of A to draft a resolution, and it passed in 2019. Course marking brings growing visibility to open and affordable course material initiatives as well. Some states like Oregon and Texas mandate course marking. This newly published guide with a contribution from DOORS cohort mentor Jeannie Hoover provides a wealth of resources for setting up course marking at your institution. 
I hope this video has given you some new inspiration for ways to reach out to stakeholders. And I have good news for OER certificate participants. There are no video related activities this month. Instead, this prompt that you see on the screen will be the discussion topic for our July cohort sessions. We look forward to hearing what you've tried, what worked, and what didn't. We can learn from our successes as well as our heartbreaks.